All right, morning everybody. Uh, my name is Randy Lau again. Uh, today we're going to talk about practical self-defense for seniors. And this is something that's been prompted with, you know, all this, all this insanity going around. Um, it's not just the Asian hate, hate crimes going around, but even in Hawaii. Um, I, I log into something called Nextdoor and constantly see things going on. There's robberies during the day, right in the middle of the day. I talked to my friend out by Ala Moana and they said they looked out the window one day and they saw a robbery right there. So this is happening all around. Uh, Milia's going to help me. Okay. Uh, Milia and I go way back uh, through a Kung Fu club. Okay. So we're just going to kind of wing it and we're going to talk about things. I brought a lot of different props. I'm just trying to think like what scenarios. Okay. Practical self-defense. The self-defense we're talking about is all about awareness. But yes, what if somebody does approach you and get in your face? Yeah. Oh, see, automatic, she blocks. Okay. How many of you have that in? Okay. What if you, you're walking in a walker? Right. What if you cannot pick up your hand? Right. What if you're holding things? What if you're, you have a cane in one hand and you're carrying that bag in the other hand? What are you going to do? The first thing really about Practical self-defense is awareness. And I hate to use the term paranoid, but you really have to be a little bit paranoid. You get out of your safe environment. And like I said, there's so many home invasions now that you have to be watching. So at home, first thing I would tell everybody, buy cameras. Um, they can be a deterrent or they can at least be evidence, okay? Or they can be an early warning. Uh, they, they hook up to your phone, so you might get something. Or with technology relatively cheap, you could get a camera, a cheap iPad, you don't have to do the expensive ones, or an old laptop, and you could have that screen on 24-7 on that camera. So it's not that difficult to do a home security system. But this is really about being outdoors. I'm sure all of you have seen these videos of people being attacked just blatantly. And it's always things where, like if Milia Let's say Amelia's um, holding a bag, right, and she's minding her own business. And these videos are horrific, right? She's doing something. She might be walking, and this guy comes, like nothing, and immediately in her face, okay? There's no yelling. There's no, like, hey, you, and, you know, all of that vitriol, yeah? These attacks, they, they surprise them. And that's why you need to be aware. So if I'm coming, to her, the first thing is she needs to eyeball me. Okay? And if I'm coming straight at her, she needs to walk to the side. Okay? Now, if you look at this situation, okay? so come back over here. Okay? So if you look at this situation, if she walks that side, okay, what's there? Okay? So she walks that side, okay? so I'm walking, you walk that side, and I come to her, she's trapped. If I push her, she's going to fall here, she's going to get injured, whatever weight in here is going to throw her balance off. So if she comes back here again, not just looking at people, but you have to scan your surroundings. So you want to go to, um, we, we talk about resistance, no resistance. So this applies to here. You want to go to least resistance. Right? There's a big open void over here. So if I'm walking to her, right, yeah. Okay. Now, the other thing I would do, and I, I don't know how well we can show this. Um, let me turn this way. Okay. You want to give that nice wide berth. So from the beginning, I'm coming to her. She needs to start taking a different path, acknowledging me, but she doesn't want to engage me. If I'm, a, you know, if I'm that angry person, she doesn't want to engage me, but she wants to let me know that I'm watching her. And any step I take, she's going to start moving away, not wait till the last minute. So if I'm coming to her, she wants to start going, right? right? And I'm turning and, yeah. So don't think, first of all, don't think, oh, I got to get there. I got to take the shortest path. Shortest path is going to be the path of injury, right? That's resistance. I'm going to fight through that. Take the longer path. 
But even before that, right, like I talked about scanning, is that the best way to go? Okay. So there's a balance in there too. Right? Um, if you're walking by yourself and there's just that one person, that's not a good situation. Right? If you're walking in a dark place, that's not a good situation. Okay. So light it with a lot of people that you feel can help you. Let's say she cannot escape me and I grab her. The first thing people do is intense, right? And you might try to yank your arm away. Right? The whole body is stiffening up. So when we train self-defense, we do things over and over and over again. So this is something simple you can do at home with each other, right? Practice grabbing and relaxing. Yeah. And you do it over and over again. Then I'm going to grab the other side and then come in the center, please. Okay? And then I'm going to come from behind and I'm going to do it in a structured way. Okay? Relax, practice relaxing. And then I'll say, tell her, practice of just folding your arm and Let's see, if I come this way, you want to turn, pivot, step with your right foot, you know, and step away from me. And what I'm doing here is, again, least resistance. If you come back again, in other words, here, let me face this way, let's face this way. If I grab her arm and she steps away from me, yeah, there's tension here, right? So she's got to fight that. If I'm stronger than her, I've got the upper hand. But if I grab her arm and she pivots this way, okay, there's no tension. She just pivots right out. Okay? It's not magic. <laughs> it's not like these self-defense videos where they say, do this and you break the lock. You have to practice. Okay? And it's practicing relaxing. So I grab, practice relaxing, and walk away and pivot. Yeah? Okay. And you notice one of the things that Melia does is that hand folds, the hand comes up. So there's a little bit of protection right here, right? It's protection and the hand is coming closer. So practice, practice situations at home. Right? So I'm gonna practice, I'm walking towards you, you're gonna take a wide berth somewhere. Yeah. Now, the one thing I'm gonna tell her to do right, is as she's walking away, remember I said, you have, to, you have to eyeball. Let the person know you're watching them, right? So I'm walking, like, yeah. Even if they're yelling at you, right? You don't know if they're targeting you. You don't know if you're just there at the wrong place at the right time, or the wrong, the, the wrong place at the wrong time, right? So, you know, I could be coming up and like, what, what, what? Come on, right? But you're going, right? So awareness and letting people know you're looking at them. For a number of years, I, tra I trained in Chinatown, and I'm in full uniform, and one of the things is, you know, you don't want to be walking on the street in your full martial arts uniform. You're like a target. And I always wondered why nobody bothered me. And my assumption is that because of my training and background, you don't realize you're carrying a certain air. Okay? So the air is sternum up, confidence, looking, head up. Okay? So what do people do today? They're crossing the street like this, right? Head down. Even if you're doing this, and I'm guilty of this too, right? You're constantly scanning and looking around, right? What's so important that, that we got to do it now? That we cannot stand on the side, go into a safe place, and address things. Right? We grew up, no cell phones, right? <laughs> we grew up landlines tied to a wall. <laughs> no phone, too bad, right? We can survive with there, okay? So awareness, scan your surroundings, What's a safe place? What's a safe time? Is it really worth going into that environment? Is it lighted enough? Are there enough people around to help you? Okay. So let's talk about people. And let's, talk, let's go back to this phone. Before we get into anything physical, okay, just about everybody's got a cell phone around. And they're either Android based or they're iPhone based. Neither, in other words, they're either Google or Alexa. If I say, hey Google, even in a lock position, my phone starts to respond. What's come out, and we're talking about it with friends, one of the things you can do is just yell, hey Google, call 911. Alexa, call 911. Because anybody who's talking on their phone, that phone is unlocked. But get people's attention. Right? Get their attention. Especially in Hawaii, right, our cultures. 
Oh, we are ashamed. I don't want anybody to know that happened to me. We, we, our culture makes us victims sometimes. Yell, call attention. If she's avoiding me, right? and there are people, already those people can help you, right? And she can make noise. Right? Help, yeah. help, help. Right, it can be that, or it can just be, hey, what's that over there, right? So it can be real, it can be non-confrontational, but people are gonna look up. So you, but again, you have to practice. You have to practice these scenarios. They seem silly, but nobody knows you're gonna be that 1%, that half percent. You're gonna be that victim. So practice at home, okay? So yeah, cell phones are interesting. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of cameras, right? Make yourself known. We'll talk about simple weapons and simple things you, you have on you. The cell phone is one. Oh, before we do that, this is a pet peeve. <laughs> yeah, right, everybody walks around like this. Oh, my, I don't have sh super shorts, but right, I see so many people walking around like this. You're just inviting crime, right? <laughs> Especially when we have large crowds. We go to Chinatown when we're, you know, before COVID, and people's phones are getting stolen left and right in Chinatown because people are walking like this and they just get lifted. So again, prevention, awareness. So I learned years ago, just a practical, I know I'm kind of diverging, but my wallet is in the front. And I'm, I'm guilty of this, I'll put it in my back pocket. But I'll, I'll have, if I'm wearing my jacket, at least I can't see it. Okay. But think about those things. Well, let's just say I have only my phone or my watch. That's it, and I'm holding my phone, and practical self-defense, if Melia comes at me, right, I'm just gonna swing an object at her. Anything becomes self-defense tool, yeah? Whatever hand, and then she comes at me with her left hand, right, I'm just gonna hold my phone in a comfortable grip and swing it. And you look at the phone, all your phones have corners. They're all edged. Sacrifice your phone over your health. Okay? Don't sacrifice your health, sacrifice your phone. And you got a new phone, a lot of them are shockproof anyway. <laughs> okay? Uh, for those of you who know a little bit of martial arts, right over here is a grip place. So if Malia grabs my hand, right? If you practice a little bit and you don't think about what you can use, just the phone can take this away, okay? But again, you need knowledge about that. But for some of you, I know some of you out there have that kind of knowledge. You just have to expand on what you can use. If Malia comes from me from the back, right? I'm holding my phone and she, let's say she bear hugs me or grabs me, right? I'm gonna come up, oh, I can't reach. I'm gonna come down, right? I'm gonna hit her with my phone from there. If, if she grabs me again, right? No resistance. I'm going to relax. I'm going to make myself heavy. Okay? So lock your fingers. I'm going to make myself heavy. She's going to come with me. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to stomp her feet. Okay? There are no rules in there. So I'm not even showing you technique. I'm just showing you, you just use whatever you have. I have fingers, right? I can start banging away on her hands here. I can scratch. Okay? If I come up, I can bite. Okay? I'm going to come here. I'm going to just whack her with everything I have. Okay? If she picks me off the ground, right, you're like, what if they're real big, pick you off the ground? That's why we wear shoes. We start kicking. We start kicking like crazy. Kick the shins, kick all of this. Right? You cannot be afraid. What, what's the most vulnerable places we always learn? Eyes, neck. Yeah. yeah, so eyes, neck, center line, right? Groin. Doesn't matter. Men, women, groin. So one of the practical things is you cannot be afraid of touching the person, right? So for self-defense purposes, if, if I'm, I'm wrapped up with Melia and she whacks my groin, right? No, just, you just tap my groin, right? I, every guy is gonna be like, hey, what are you doing, right? <laughs> Don't touch down there. Don't touch my private part. Okay? So that's just a simple thing. If I'm coming in and Malia just taps my face, I'm, 
it's automatic, I'm going to protect my eyes. Okay? What we learn is you have fingers. Okay? So you scratch, right? So I come in, right? you scratch. Right? She's going to scratch, so I'll put my hand up here. So, yeah. Just with your fingertips, fingertips, yeah. Just scratch, like cat. Just, just whip, you know, like shaking water off, right? So just, just scratch. I'll come in like what, right? And especially guys who posture, they're all stiff. They're all open. Milia can step back, right? So she would step back out of the way, right? If I can't get in range, and we talked about this evading, okay? But if you're in that situation, right? Eyes, right? you turn 45, right? Eyes, ears, right on the side of the neck, um, chest, under the arms, groin, all the joints. Step on the toes, right? bite the hands, whack over here. Right? Very sensitive, very sensitive points. I got my phone, right? boom, right into the face. Who cares? I'm being attacked, right? I need to defend myself. What if Malia is out there and she's got walker. And you're thinking, oh, what can she do? Well, what was the first scenario, right? From far away, I'm coming to her, what should she do? You're gonna take longer to move, then you really need to practice that awareness. So you practice in the home or anywhere you go, if you're going to senior centers or the malls, right? As you walk through the mall, practice eyeballing. That's your training. Nobody knows you're, you're training self-defense, right? But if I'm far away, I'm going to be way back here, right? And I'm coming out and I decide I'm going to, you're slowly walking towards me and I'm going to take your path. As soon as you see me taking that path, right? It's evasion, right? And she's watching me. And if you're in a crowd, so if somebody's coming and I'm standing and I'm standing here, I'm just a bystander and you evade, right? and that person's coming here, he's gonna go behind me. Okay? Don't be afraid to use other people to block you and help you. You have to practice these scenarios in, in your mind. You have to think about them. Okay? You know, you wouldn't think of this as a self-defense weapon, yeah? If Malia comes, comes at me, right? <laughs> you notice how I, Jam it on the ground, right? So, even if you can't walk fast, if you come close, watch your feet. Watch your feet, just stay right there. I haven't had to move. Uh, I'll bet all of you can, can do this, right? That constant movement, right? Gripping and smash their feet and staying behind here, right? But the first part is to evade, to stay out of that situation. Some people are not reliant on it, right? This is, this is the um, secondary failsafe. If you can pick it up, right? And you see this, we see this in sitcoms all the time. This is a real thing, right? Go ahead, right, come at me. Think about your walker. Right? It's more than just to stabilize you. Same thing with, with the cane. If, you, if you're like this, if Malia is coming at me, right? I'm gonna evade. And again, same thing, you notice I'm kind of tapping that, right? I'm getting it ready. Short steps, not long steps that take me a long, long time to balance, just short steps. Okay? If she comes on this side, notice how I switch my hand, if I can. Okay? If I can't switch my hand, right? If, if I'm, let's say that it's only on my left side, right? She comes on this side, no problem, right? I'm keeping the cane in between. So I can whack her or stomp her foot or you know block, block two hands or do something, right? But to stabilize me and keep something in between. So if um, if she comes on this side, right? right? I'll just turn. So you have to think, right? This practical self-defense, avoiding the situation first. If you can't avoid it, start creating barriers that you have. There was that incident in I think San Francisco where that Chinese woman fought back, right? She reached behind, she had a two by four, right? You got this hook side, right? So if, if 
I'm trapped, I can brace on something, right? I'll whack with the hook side. Okay? I'm not gonna try and sword fight, sword fight with her. Okay? I'm gonna keep it short and that's all I need, right? And just keep everything short. I'm not gonna reach, just keep everything short. Just like chopping something, right? And changing. One of the self-defense things that we talk about again is eyes, right? Eyes are sensitive, groin is sensitive. Uh, ears are sensitive, whack the ears, pull the ears. How many of you ever had your ears pulled as young kids, right? I still tell people, oh, grab the ears. MMA guy probably, <laughs> I'm getting in trouble now. But if you twist the ear, it's so sensitive, right? That person will go, it's a lot of pain. But I don't have to be a martial artist and punch her hard, right? I don't have to stick my fingers all the way in. All I have to do is brush. Okay? So if you, face the camera, if you watch your eyes, okay? okay? So keep your eyes open, don't blink. Okay, relax now. Okay, every time my hand comes, she blinks, yeah? Every blink is, is an opportunity to get away. If I come close, natural reaction, you're gonna stay there? Right? They're gonna lean back. So even if you don't touch them, you don't have to fight, you can just, like, pre there, see? Just pretending to throw, okay? And that leads into the next thing. You got objects on you, throw them. You got money, right? I don't have coins on me, but you throw them, right? So, um, Milia's uncle, my teacher, and his friends, they used to carry coins in, on their person, loose coins. And they would reach into their pocket and they would throw, throw the coins, that's a distraction. They had training, so they would throw the coins, kick, and then get out of there. So even for them, they're not gonna stay there and engage. Yeah? Well, speaking of that, our, our Uncle Bobby, right? He didn't throw coins, he spit in their face. <laughs> So, you know, uh, most of our seniors, we tell them hydrate. There's, there's a self-defense reason why you want to be able to get a big blob of spit in your mouth, right? And Uncle Bobby would do this. He would teach this practical self-defense and he stand there and said, okay, put your hands up. And he go, Bruh! <laughs> and a big foam ball would come out, right? That's horrible, especially right now, everybody panics. But that's what you have, right? So pandemic, you gather that big ball of spit, that person comes, pull it down, blah, right? Right in their face, and the person will, will do this. Right? If you have the presence of mind in training, you can get one strike in and get out of there or call. Okay? All right, so Cain, uh, let's go back to the bag, right? She's holding the bag. The bag is in front, but the bag, the bag is a protection too, yeah? So she sees me coming, she can reposition the bag so she's carrying it in front of her. Yeah, yeah. And she's holding, see the two hands from there. So I'm coming, right? She can just kind of shove the bag into me. Yeah. Again, a barrier. Okay. You have purse, bag, whatever. You got your groceries, give up your groceries. Okay. Keys, of course, we always talk about keys. Yeah. You hold the keys and you can do it like what Milia is doing. Right? You can do these methods where you're holding one key inside so it sticks out, right? So people grab, right? I wanna grab, she's just gonna drill that in. Okay? Uh, rings, go and buy a cheap costume ring that's not flashy, but if, if I grab the hand, that ring, those objects will penetrate, yeah? Okay. Now, look at my, my keychain. Okay, and this is part of that paranoia. It's got a lot of dead keys in there. Okay, I keep it on, I keep it on a caribbeaner, and I can I can swing this around or I can launch it. Okay. So again, throwing. So if I got dead keys, right, I could take off dead keys and hold it in in my hand, right, and I can I can throw it or I can swing it. I can just hold it in my hand like this. Okay, same thing. She comes to reach me, right? I just I'm just aiming for my center. I don't care. I don't, I don't need to be that high-end martial artist, right? It's gonna, I just wanna like, boom. And where's the vulnerable place? Eyes. And run, get out of there, call for help. Okay, so keys. Things that are gonna get you in trouble? Right? Earbuds. 
One earbud, not bad. Two earbuds, you're walking down, right? You're not paying attention. You gotta constantly be looking up, letting people know you're aware of them. The case, of course, I can use. Okay, simple weapons that nobody thinks of, fan, yeah? Especially now, it's nice and hot. She comes, Malia walks at me, right? It's up there. Where am I aiming? Again, eyes. Right? Simple things like that. If uh, I'm holding an object, a stick, she comes at me, I just, you know, hold it out. Right? And I'm doing a lot of twisting. She grabs my hand. Right? A lot of twisting. Right? A lot of twisting. Right? I'm not going to struggle here. It's just simple, just simple wiggling around. Wiggling around. Stomp her foot. <laughs> I'm going to kick her shins. Right? I'm going to poke her eyes. But hopefully it never gets to that. So I just, I just want to show you, you have to think, what do you have, right? Water bottle, I'm drinking water bottle. If, if it's uncapped, right? Throwing water is a distraction, right? Throwing water in the face is a distraction. If I catch her with the lip, that's pretty damaging right? for the eye or wherever. If it's closed, right? same thing. Everything you can hold in your hand. What I have on me, my watch. <laughs> so she comes at me, I use the watch side, right? <laughs> this side I don't have anything, this side I have a watch. My watch has textures on it, right? That, that helps me. I have a pen in my pocket, right? I see her, I don't, I don't feel good, and I just rest my hand here, right? She comes at me, simple objects right? from here. Uh, practical objects, things like jackets, right? Cloth, jacket, rope, right? If I'm holding that, she comes at me. <laughs> you don't look at this as a whip, yeah? But if I just flick it, the edges are like whips, right? That bothers you, okay? And then you can also hold it to kind of protect yourself and, and pad yourself. I, I've seen it where people will grab this right there, like, give it to me. Right? So you can use this as a fake distraction. Right? Like, oh no, I want my jacket. Oh, okay, you can have it. <laughs> Who cares about the jacket, right? People like Chinese jackets because they got hidden pockets in them all over the place. So you can keep things. So look at what's on you. What can you use? Credit card, right? Credit card can slice. Just throwing it is a distraction. But just holding it and slicing is a distraction. So all these, all these things. But uh, here's the thing about coins. So you just throw the coin, right? If I, I'm just gonna give up these coins for the demo, but just throwing the coins out, right? It's that kind of distraction from there. And you just whip it out as fast as you can. If you wanna train, there are specific ways for the accuracy. And I'm not just talking ninja stars, but there's ways to throw coins. So I just had a few more things just to kind of demonstrate, right? You have something short your keys, um, we were talking, I just brought this because people talk about, you know, they walk with these walking sticks. Yeah. And the other part I just want to mention is, it's not easy to, to defend yourself if you don't practice and you don't strengthen your body some way. The Tai Chi can strengthen your body, it can balance. You have to practice these scenarios, right? So I'm, I'm walking, right, we just practice evading, yeah. Yeah, and looking, yeah? and just practice that all the time. You can practice it with your grandkids, right? Playing chase, hey, chase me. And you practice that evasion, you, you get that in your mind. But I want to just show you this. Uh, this is a weight bar. It's filled with BBs. And it's just a real easy, low cost, cheap, do-it-yourself exercise bar. This one happens to be uh, one inch pipe, I just capped it on the ends. Caps are so tight, I'm not worried about it falling out. And I just filled them with regular BBs, you know, like BB gun, those kinds of things. And I think this one is about five pounds. And you can just do all of these simple exercises. Doing things like this will help to strengthen right? all that twisting movements, the grabbing movements. Just tossing it from one hand to each other, right? You can do all your barbell, your traditional weight movements with these. So this is just to give you that idea that you don't have to go down and buy things. You can actually make things very cheap.
So to summarize, you know, practical self-defense is one avoiding the situation, okay? which means you need to be aware, you need to be scanning your surroundings. You need to have that little inkling of paranoia that something could happen to you and you need to prevent it. You need to look for places that are safe, avoid places that are not safe, right? People, situations. And you need to evade, right? As soon as I come towards Milia, she needs to evade. Take the long way around. Don't shortcut it. Just take the long way around. Just get out of, get out of that environment where you're the victim. Yeah. Okay, I think that's, yeah. Thank you. Oh, let's see if Milia remembers. Yeah. All right, thank you, everybody.